Mike Cooley is an Irish-born engineer and former trade union leader, best known for his work on the social effects of technology and in particular socially useful production and human-centered systems. He is also known for his involvement in workplace activism at the British company Lucas Aerospace in the late 1970s. In 1981, he was a recipient of the Right Livelihood Award. Cooley was born in Tuam, Ireland, and attended the Christian Brothers School and was classmates with Tom Murphy, playwright, and the trade unionist Mick Brennan. He was an apprentice at the Tuam Sugar Factory and later studied engineering in Germany, Switzerland, and England, gaining a PhD in computer aided design. Cooley has held several leadership positions in the field of computer-aided design and was active as an advisor on numerous public and private sector projects. He was founding president of the International Research Institute in Human-Centered Systems IRIHCS, and the International Journal AI and Society and founding director of the Greater London Enterprise Board. He has published over 100 scientific papers as well as 15 books, and has been a guest lecturer at universities in Europe, Australia, the US and Japan. His seminal work, Architect or B, has been translated into six languages. According to Cooley, scientific and technological developments have invariably proved to be double-edged. They produced the beauty of Venice and the hideousness of Chernobyl, the caring therapies of Röntgen's X-rays and the destruction of Hiroshima. The Lucas Plan, 1970s Towards the end of the 1970s, Mike Cooley was a designer at Lucas Aerospace, and chaired the local branch of the technical trade union TASS. He was one of the militant activists behind the Lucas Plan, a radical strategy to avoid workforce layoffs by converting production at Lucas from armaments to civilian products. The vision of the plan was to replace weapons manufacture with the development of socially useful goods, like solar heating equipment, artificial kidneys, and systems for intermodal transportation. The goal was to not simply retain jobs, but to design the work so that the workers would be motivated by the social value of their activities. As Cooley put it, the workers are the experts. The proposals of the alternative plan were not accepted by Lucas management, and Cooley was dismissed in 1981, allegedly because of excessive time spent upon union business or concerns of society as a whole. Following his sacking by Lucas he was appointed technology director of the GLC and later founded the Greater London Enterprise Board according to Cooley. Scientific and technological developments have invariably proved to be double-edged. They produced the beauty of Venice and the hideousness of Chernobyl, the caring therapies of Röntgen's X-rays and the destruction of Hiroshima. Topic Architect or B. 1980, the alternatives are stark. Either we will have a future in which human beings are reduced to a sort of bee-like behavior, reacting to the systems and equipment specified for them, or we will have a future in which masses of people, conscious of their skills and abilities in both a political and a technical sense, decide that they are going to be the architects of a new form of technological development which will enhance human creativity and mean more freedom of choice and expression rather than less. The truth is, we shall have to make the profound decision as to whether we intend to act as architects or behave like bees. Mike Cooley in 1980, Cooley published a critique of the automation and computerization of engineering work under the title Architect or Bee. The human technology relationship. The title alludes to a comparison made by Karl Marx, on the issue of the creative achievements of human imaginative power, on the sanctity of work, a bee puts to shame many an architect in the construction of its cells, but what distinguishes the worst of architects from the best of bees is namely this. The architect will construct in his imagination that which he will ultimately erect in reality. At the end of every labor process, we get that which existed in the consciousness of the laborer at its commencement, according to Orlando Hill, Mike Cooley's architect or B. 
put the case that a new organization of technology could provide social good rather than profit. He goes on to say, Cooley argues that if we are going to move from merrily producing commodities to producing goods that people need and want, we must change our attitude towards technology. The technology used today evolved from the concept of the division of labor. In a capitalist system in which the maximization of profit is the sole objective and people are regarded as units of labor power, the division of labor and fragmentation of skills is absolutely rational and scientific. However, the consequence is the deskilling of workers and alienation from reality. A division between theory and practice is created with a bias towards theoretical knowledge. The skill and practical knowledge of the worker is despised. Mike Cooley's pioneering work on human centered systems and socially useful production was compiled and first published by Shirley Cooley, Mike's wife, in 1980. Hand and Brain Publications, the second edition was published in the USA in 1982 by South End Press with an introduction from MIT professor David Noble and was followed by a new edition published by Hogarth Press in 1980 with an introduction by Anthony Barnett. The current edition was published by Spokesman Books in 2016 and has an introduction by Francis O'Grady the General Secretary of the TUC. The book has been translated into over 20 languages including Finnish, Irish and Chinese. Topic. Socially useful production In The Shape of Future Technology, Mike Cooley asserts, one of the most remarkable features of modern industrial society, is the gap between that which technology could provide for society, its potential, and that which it actually does provide for society, its reality. We have for example, complex control systems which can guide a missile to another continent with extraordinary accuracy, yet the blind and the disabled have to stagger around our cities in very much the same way as they did in medieval times. Topic. The Right Livelihood Award, 1981 Mike Cooley was awarded the Right Livelihood Award in 1981 for "...designing and promoting the theory and practice of human-centered, socially useful production." In his acceptance speech, Mike Cooley noted, "...science and technology is not given. It was made by people like us. If it's not doing for us what we want, we have a right and a responsibility to change it." Human-centered systems In Architect or B, Cooley coined the term, "...human-centered systems." In the context of the transition in his profession from traditional drafting at a drawing board to computer-aided design. Human-centered systems, as used in economics, computing and design, aim to preserve or enhance human skills, in both manual and office work, in environments in which technology tends to undermine the skills that people use in their work, see in particular, Human-Centered Systems by Mike Cooley, Chapter 10, Designing Human-Centered Technology, a cross-disciplinary project in computer-aided manufacturing, Springer Verlag London 1989, Editor Howard Rosenbrock, ISBN 978-3-540-19567-2 In the 2008 paper, On Human-Machine Symbiosis, Cooley asserts, Human-centeredness asserts firstly, that we must always put people before machines, however complex or elegant that machine might be, and, secondly, it marvels and delights at the ability and ingenuity of human beings. The human-centered systems movement looks sensitively at these forms of science and technology which meet our cultural, historical and societal requirements, and seeks to develop more appropriate forms of technology to meet out long-term aspirations. 
In the human-centered system, there exists a symbiotic relation between the human and the machine in which the human being would handle the qualitative subjective judgments and the machine the quantitative elements. It involves a radical redesign of the interface technologies and at a philosophical level the objective is to provide tools in the Heidegger sense which would support human skill and ingenuity rather than machines which would objectivize that knowledge. The Human-Centered Systems book series published by Springer Verlag, London is a useful resource. Topic: Greater London Enterprise Board, Gleb, 1982. Ken Livingstone and Mike Cooley founded the Greater London Enterprise Board, Gleb, in 1982, which was an industrial development and job creation agency set up by the GLC to create employment by investing in the industrial regeneration of London, with the funds provided by the council, its workers' pension fund, and the financial markets. During the first two years of the Enterprise Board's existence the Greater London Council provided a total annual budget of around £30 million, made up of some £20 million Section 137 funds and £10 million Section 3 mortgage loan facilities. Frank Dobson in Hansard noted in 1985 when GLEB can under threat of closure the government are not worried because the GLEB has been a failure, they are worried because it has been a success. When the GLC was abolished in 1986 the board became an independent company, changed its name to Greater London Enterprise GLE, and became reliant on its own income to fund its activities. Profits from GLE's commercial activities were reinvested in delivering not-for-profit activities. Topic AI and Society Founding Chairman, 1987 Mike Cooley was also the founding chairman of AI and Society, which is now a major international forum for socially responsible technology. The journal has been running since 1987 and focuses on societal issues including the design, use, management, and policy of information, communications and new media technologies, with a particular emphasis on cultural, social, cognitive, economic, ethical, and philosophical implications Springer, 2018. In his paper Architect or B. Mike Cooley, The Human Spirit Karamjeet Gill editor or AI and Society noted, it was during the summer of 1981, at a summer school at the University of Sussex, that I was introduced to Mike Cooley's seminal book, Architect or B. The Human, Technology Relationship, edited by Shirley Cooley. A revised version of the book came out in 1987 under the same title but with a new subtitle that reflected the far-reaching impact of technology on society, Architect or B. The Human Price of Technology Cooley, Ibid. This seminal work remains at the heart of the evolution of AI and society. Topic Delinquent Genius, The Strange Affair of Man and His Technology, 1992 Published 2018 Delinquent Genius, The Strange Affair of Man and His Technology by Mike Cooley with a foreword by Michael D. Higgins, President of Ireland explores the relationship between mankind and technology development technological progress. The book analyzes the social impact of technology and the dangers of accepting the one best scientific idea of progress. The book was written in 1992 but not published until 2018. According to Michael D. Higgins, President of Ireland, delinquent genius is simply brimming with insights. It traces the sources of technology and its application. It is, above all else, a brilliant account of a dangerous hubris which can lead to that which is instrumental becoming a source, a dangerous source of domination, of passive rather than active existence. I believe the publication of this book must be seen as an invaluable contribution. What is particularly moving in it is that it takes all of these issues that have been raised in different fora, and in different ways and locates them in a biographical experience of a brilliant scholar. There is something immensely hopeful in this, the sheer power that comes from retaining one's early curiosity, harvesting it through scholarship, and delivering it for the benefit of mankind. 
According to Adrian Smith, Professor of Technology and Society at the Science Policy Research Unit SPRU, University of Sussex, in the book, Mike looks at vantage points for realizing neglected human purposes, such as creative work and environmental sustainability, through technology. Looking at the same picture from different angles yields surprising results. Each of the book's short chapters takes different vantage points to look upon a period of intense restructuring in the industrial manufacturing landscape, whose effects are still felt today. <laughs> books Cooley, Mike Architect or B. The Human – Technology Relationship. Boston, South End Press. ISBN 978-0-89608-131-4. Cooley, Mike Produkte für das Leben statt Waffen für den Tod. Germany, Roald Verlag. ISBN 9783499148309. Cooley, Mike 2016. Architect or B. The Human Price of Technology. UK, Spokesman Books. ISBN 978-0-85124-8493. Cooley, Mike 2018. Delinquent Genius, The Strange Affair of Man and His Technology. UK, Spokesman Books. ISBN 978-0851248783 Film, radio and television In 1983 Mike was featured in Farewell to Work, produced for Channel 4 by Udi Eichler of Brook Productions. On-screen participants include Andre Gores, Patrick Minford, Claus Ove, Mike Cooley and the discussion is chaired by Robert Hutchison. The film argues that the current technological revolution will virtually eliminate the manual working class by the end of the century and permanently displace jobs. He proposes working towards a future in which free time is sustained by a guaranteed minimum income. He argues that in this future, production should be confined to those goods which are essential, not determined by the marketplace, and that people should use their freedom in pursuit of satisfying and autonomous activities. His views are countered by the other guests. Mike also features prominently in German filmmaker Harun Faraki's We Man Seat, as you see, 1983, which examines the emergence of computerization and its repercussions on military and managerial uses of innovative technology, rather than for the solution of social problems and the amelioration of human lives. Mike's work was the subject of the TV documentary, Look, No Hands, in 1988 made for the Equinox Channel 4 documentary series. Directed by Christopher Rollins and produced by Deborah Hauer. The film was shown as part of season 1988, episode 12, on October 9, 1988 and also produced as a VHS video. My Education by John Quinn was an RTE radio series and book published by Town House in 1997, ISBN 9781860590726. The book is a set of biographical interviews with eminent educationalists discussing their own education and features Mike Cooley, Noam Chomsky, Seamus Heaney and Charles Handy among others. Mike and John Quinn also collaborated on Education for the 1990s, three lectures given at a symposium in Radio Telefis ARN, October 1989, RTE 1989. Mike Cooley appeared in the 2003 Alan Gilsonan documentary, Sing On Forever about the Irish playwright Tom Murphy playwright, recalling his friendship with Murphy in Tuam. Mike describes in the documentary their journeys on motorbikes, surveying the world like anthropologists in a strange land. He remembers one trip to the asylum in Ballinasloe and the haunting image of an inmate looking out.
Topic: The Mike Cooley Archive, Waterford Institute of Technology, Luke Wadding Library. The Waterford Institute of Technology, Luke Wadding Library acquired by donation from the Cooley family the entire archive of Professor Mike Cooley. The archive includes over 1400 items including photographs, correspondences, journals, books, drawings, videos, cassette tapes, and slides. The collection includes over 1400 items including photographs, correspondences such as letters and postcards, journals, a wide range of books, drawings, cassette tapes, and slides. A large part of the archive is in relation to the Lucas Plan, and the various correspondences made between different parties about this in the 1970s and includes photographs, letters both typed and handwritten, newspaper articles, and posters. The collection contains not only the personal work but also many books on literature and poetry. The challenging task in the development of the archive is to digitize the large and diverse material to make it available online for students and researchers. To access the collection for research purposes please contact Robert O'Connor in the School of Science and Computing or Kieran Cronin at the Luke Wadding Library. <laughs>